guys, it's me, Melissa, and welcome back to my channel. And here we got my dad, and he can take it away. Yeah, this is basically going to be me. Um, it's a rarity, but it's going to be me. Uh, this is a two-part video, meaning it's all going to be in one video. But I'm going to separate it in two parts, and I'll explain why. The first part of the video has to do with cleaning the interior of my Tucson and the products that I have purchased at Dollar Tree to make that possible. You don't use it on the Corvette? Uh, no. <laughs> the, no. The se no, those are really expensive stuff. <laughs> the, the second part of the video is on this new thing that I'm on, which is diamond painting. So, do you know what the first three words were when I got my first diamond painting? I opened up the bag, I looked at the diamond painting and went, throw this out. So if you're interested in knowing how I went from throw this out to I can't wait for my next one to show up, then watch the second part of this video. If you have no interest at all in diamond paintings, then this you don't have to watch the second part, and that makes it easier for you. So let's get started. Now, when it comes to cleaning a car, the interior of your car, there's two schools of thought. There's schools of thought one, which is people don't clean their car until the interior is a biohazard. Like my car. That is my car. That means the stains and everything are so embedded in the car that it takes you nine months to get it clean again. Then there's the second school of thought, which is mine, which is you clean your car every week or every two weeks. And the reason for that is you can do it in 10 to 15 minutes. So those are the two schools of thought. My school of thought means keep it clean because I've always gone with the philosophy that a clean car is a happy car. And I like a happy car. My car is very happy. Your happy car is disgusting. Uh, okay. So first of all... Sorry, I do storage units and flea markets and... <laughs> yeah, but you can still clean it. That, that's not important. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is these deodorizers for your car. Now, believe it or not... I don't like an overpowering scent that, you know, oh, you get man. in the car and you go, oh, God, it's too much. These give you a very mild scent, and they last for two and a half weeks. So you figure two of these, or $2.50, is good for a month. I'm kind of partial to the cherry and the strawberry. Eh, like the cherry. Some people like the lavender or the one that smells like fresh laundry or something. I don't know. I like new car scent. No, there's no. no matter, I don't even know what no is how, new. How old my car is? I like what new is scent. new car? Somebody could explain leather. to me what. Leather. No, no, it's not. I, I saw one that that they had in the Dollar Tree. It was called warm leather. What's warm leather? That happens when you sit on the car for too long and the heat gets to it. Yeah. Anyway, for two dollars and fifty cents a month. You keep your car with a nice little scent, and they go in the vent, especially in Florida. With the heat the way it is and the air conditioner running, you get this nice little scent. In this case, it's cherry, or the one that's in the car right now is strawberry. So it's really worth the money. Okay, the next thing, and I have to make this, this is really important. This is a small bottle of Armor Oil. Even though it's a small bottle, it will last a long time when you clean the interior of your car. Now, there are two major reasons why you put this on your car. The first reason, obviously, is, oh, look, it's got a nice little shine or a satin shine to the vinyl. But the second part is what's most important. These create inside a UV protectorant. And the UV protectorant is what keeps all your vinyl from drying out, discoloring, and cracking. So that's the real major reason you want to use that. I had a friend of mine who used to use sunscreen on his car in the interior because it kept it from cracking because it was a sunscreen. So this is very important for your car. Do not not put this on your car. Next, I want to explain these towels. I bought these towels and there's two of them. There's two of them in the package and that's what you need. You only need two towels to keep your car clean on the interior. One towel is for the armor oil. And the second towel is for this product, which is a glass cleaner. Now you're going to say, Mike, you only use the glass cleaner for cleaning glass or the screen, the infotainment screen. But I want to know who the genius was who in the middle of the night was sleeping in bed and decided, I want to make an interior trim on a car that one is the most difficult to keep clean, shows every amount of dirt, 
smears all over the place, and it's just disgusting when it gets dirty 10 minutes after you clean it. So somebody came out with what they call piano black. Piano black is, is the nicest colored interior for two minutes. After two minutes, you can't touch it. You can't do anything to it because if you touch it, you get fingerprints. If you put your hand across it, it's all smeared. If you let it sit for a while, it's covered in dust. So this rag I use with the glass cleaner to clean this piano black plastic. Melissa okay. just I'm not going to let you take over. No. Oh. So Melissa just <laughs> left, so I'm I guess really I'm anything. taking over. That's good. Okay, so that's what you use this for. Obviously, you'd use this to clean the interior of your car, the glass on the interior, but it also is for the interior of that disgusting piano black plastic. Now, the other thing with this is that it's very difficult to clean the interior of the glass because when you put the paper towel on your hand and you push it up against there, you're getting the pressure from your fingers. So what I did is I found a little bit of, it's, it's like a kind of hard sponge, and I wrap the paper towel around it and then I press it up against the glass so that when I go back and forth, I'm getting the pressure of the whole piece rather than the pressure of just my fingers because when you have just your fingers going it doesn't work as well so this is just a suggestion i mean you can maintain that way and that's okay now this right here shout it's a it's a it's a towelette it's a degreasing towelette and what i do with it is i use it for i have cloth interior in my car it's a black cloth and it gets dusty and dirty so I take one of these towelettes for each of the seats and I have some cloth on the door panel I use these disinfectant cleaners it's like a degreaser disinfectant a cleaner it cleans the cloth perfectly and it works very well because when you finish with it you just throw it away but dealing with that dealing with cleaning I have to recommend this stuff it's called LA totally awesome all-purpose degreaser now, what do you use this for? There are basically three parts of your car that will get the dirtiest on the interior. One is the door sill. Two is the door jam, which is when you open up the door and you have that plastic piece on the bottom and you're always kicking it with your foot. That's number two. And number three are the floor mats. But you don't want to take this stuff and clean your door sill and your door with this cloth when it's filthy. So what you do, and I know I had spoken about this before, it was this, these paper towels that are like cloth paper towels. I use these paper towels and I use it to clean the door sill using this awesome degreaser. So you first use this on the door sill, the, the floor mats and the, the door panel, the kick panel, before you put this on. Because other than that, you're just taking the armor off and smearing it over dirt. So you're just taking the dirt and moving it from one spot to another. So use this first. Because if you use this, you're cleaning the whole thing so that there's nothing on there. And then this thing is the protector that goes over it and it, it doesn't look that bad. Now one product that I want to recommend, and it's not from the Dollar Tree store, but it's an essential for cleaning the interior, is a small shop vac. The shop vac you use to clean your floor mats around the carpet near the seats and everything. So you should definitely have one of those. And when I'm finished, when I'm finished with the floor mats, vacuuming them and using the, uh, the degreaser to clean the floor mat after, I always spray only the floor mats with this because it's a scent, it's very mild, and it's just something to keep because the floor mats theoretically get really, really absorb all the stuff that's at the bottom of your foot so you want to make sure that you have something to spray on there but you don't want to again do anything to the floor mat until after you've vacuumed it you've degreased all the dirt off it then you want to put something like this on it because this will really help now i have these last two items this i keep in the in the back because i'm i guess i'm paranoid about dust and everything so I bought this at Dollar Tree and I just go over the dashboard with this every couple of days and it just keeps everything clean. But you know, you don't really have to use this. But this one, this one, this real soft, I got, you need to see this.
because this is really the softest cloth you could ever get. I use this on the infotainment screen. This, every time I look at the infotainment screen or I look at the dashboard screen, it's always filthy. And by filthy, I mean covered in dust. And, and my windows are closed and it's still covered in dust. So I use this to keep it clean. And I keep it stuffed in the mat pocket. That's how I keep everything clean. So basically, these are the products that you need. And you can use either one of two ways. You can do it the biohazard way. My daughter does it. Or you can do it every week or every other week and it takes you five to ten minutes. But the one thing you want to do is you want to keep the interior of your car clean and you can do it very inexpensively using these products from the Dollar Tree store. If you have any additional questions in regard to keeping the interior clean or you need any additional answers to what I spoke about while I was cleaning the interior of my car, just leave it in the comments because what happens is Melissa... Well, what happens is I leave a comment on the video and Melissa pins the comment. So when you see my pinned comment, that allows you the opportunity to ask me any question that you want. And I'll be glad. I always answer every single comment that's sent to me. I answer it. So if you have any car care questions you, you want and you want some answers on something like that, I'll be glad to do it. So basically, this ends part one. So if you, if you have no interest in diamond painting, that's fine. You can kill it here. But if you want to know about my journey in diamond paintings... Stay tuned for part two. Hey, hi. This is part two. Uh, we'll call it Diamond Painting 101 or how I decided to do it when I gave up originally. When it comes in, when you get a diamond painting and it comes in, it will normally look, it's more of a like paper. It's more of a piece of canvas. And on that piece of canvas, is a tiny piece of plastic and that plastic protects what's underneath and what's underneath this thing is what I call fly paper and fly paper is very very sticky so you have to watch out what you're doing now a lot of these diamond paintings have between eight and ten thousand diamonds so that when I first saw this I, I was shocked by the amount of little teeny tiny diamonds that went with it. So the first thing I had to do was figure out a way, how do I get this piece, this floppy little piece of canvas with all the little things so that I could actually work on it. And what I did is I purchased this, which is 3M number 77 glue. And what I did is I sprayed this piece of foam and the foam comes from the Dollar Tree store. So for $1.25, you get this piece of foam. And depending on the size of the actual diamond painting, you can either get one or two paintings from one piece of foam. So I took the piece of foam and I sprayed it with the glue. Then I took the actual canvas and I sprayed it with the glue. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is that when you go to put them together, you have to start... At, at a corner where it's flat and then you have to work your way across until it's completely down and what you end up with is you end up with something like this so here's a piece of canvas with the plastic on top and I glued it to this piece of foam once I have it glued to the piece of foam then I cut out all of the excess and when I cut out the excess you end up with this and what this is is basically the, what I'm going to work on because I'm going to be working on this and then putting it in my garage with the rest of them but now when you get the painting you get three things you get a little packet like this and in this little packet is the actual tray that the diamonds go in. You get these little teeny tiny bags you're supposed to put the excess in. But let me tell you something, you don't want to work with that because it's very, very, very hard for you to put anything inside these little extremely small bags. And then you get the pen that you use to install them and then you get the wax 
and the wax is used to charge the pen to pick up the diamonds. Now, I know that sounds a little confusing, but let me explain. Now, with these little bags, right, where you're supposed to put the excess after each of the colors, don't do it. Go to the Dollar Tree store and buy 10 of these. They're 10 for $1.25. So I bought 20 of them because the normal colors are anywhere from 17 to 25. So I bought two sets of these, which is 20. You put the excess in here, and then if you need to go back, you're going to have to go back. It's a lot easier to get the one diamond out of here than it is to try and get them out of that little bag. So getting back to this again. Okay, so I started off with this. Now I have this. But how am I going to put them together? The big question is, how do I put them together? Well, when you cut, when you cut the section off where you only have this, front, this one little piece you're going to work with, you get a ledger. The ledger is attached to it, but you're going to cut it out. This is gold, baby. Don't lose this, because it corresponds to the number and the color that's on this piece. So when I first got this, and I put it down like this, first of all, my head, my head, my neck started to hurt after five minutes, because I could not keep my head down here in order to try and put the pieces in, and then trying to keep my arm steady so I could put them on these little teeny weeny tiny numbers I said no I, ca I can't do this either I have to engineer something better or I just can't do it it's impossible so what I did was I came up with the following and I believe this will help anyone to actually it becomes fun okay it becomes more interesting so the first thing you do is and it's a little complicated, so it, it, it's going to take you a little bit of time, but once you do it, if you like diamond paintings, you're going to love this. So the first thing I had to do was I had to get the box up high enough so that my neck didn't hurt. So I got this box, and this box is roughly 21 by 16. Now, I would say that's the minimum size. Don't go any smaller than this because of this piece that's right here. And what this piece is right here is I went to the Lowe's and I bought a three foot piece of crappy pine, one by four uh, pine. Not expensive, it was like $3 and something cents. I cut a piece 24 inches and I cut two pieces three inches. And that became the, the foundation of this wooden piece. Then I took some of the foam that I had left over from cutting the pieces and I put the foam on top of it so that my hand would, would not rest directly on the actual piece of wood. Now, you can, you can put this together either with two-sided tape or you can use your number 77 glue and glue it to the actual piece of wood. Then I took masking tape and I just masking taped it and double-sided taped it to the board. So what this did was it gave me the ability to put my arm over here. And boy, it was so much better that I could rest my arm right here. My head was almost level with the box. So now it became so much easier to put the piece on there. But now I still had one major problem. So I could take the piece, I could slide it underneath. See, you can actually slide the piece underneath. So that said to me, I don't need to have this piece of plastic. I mean, if I have to keep trying to pull this piece of plastic away, try to keep pulling the plastic away, then putting the piece of plastic back on, then it starts to drive you nuts after a while. So I have the ability to take the whole piece of plastic off because my hand is never going to touch the piece that's in it. So let's say, for example, let's say, for example, I'm getting ready to do one. Now I said, well, wait a minute. I've got my arm at the right place, i got my neck at the right place, but I can't see these little tiny, I can't see these little tiny things that's starting to hurt my eyes. So what I did is I went down to Harbor Freight, and I'm sure you can buy this anywhere. Anywhere. And I bought this piece. This is a piece that goes over your head, and it's got a little magnifying glass on it. And it is amazing when you put this on, how it makes each one of the letters is so much easier to see. So much easier to see. 
So I would definitely recommend getting one of these, and it's under ten dollars. I mean, it has a multiple uses, so you don't have to use it for diamond painting. But I'm saying, if you have these glasses, any type of a magnification glass that can go over your head, if you have this and you buy and you buy this, you build this little thing on the box. Now you have a place to put your arm. You have a thing to magnify so that you can see it. So now you're ready. So now you're saying, okay. I'm looking at the thing, what am I going to do? Okay, so in regards to this particular picture, if I was going to do the next one, it would be P. So I would go to this next, and I would say, okay, I want to do P. So what is P? P is number 15. So I would go to my colored, these are my colored bags, and don't worry about, I'm not going to have enough diamonds, because they give you extra for every single color. And don't get discouraged either, because one time I dropped this whole thing on the floor. I said a few choice words, thank God we don't have any children in the house. And then I picked them all up, and I used them. So never get discouraged. So here's the deal. So you take your pair of scissors, and you cut out one of these. You cut out number 15, because that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to do this one next. Now, they gave you this tray. They gave you this tray to put the diamonds on, but wait a minute, you can't put all these diamonds in a tray. So I went to the Dollar Tree store, and I bought two of these little containers, $1.25 for two containers. So what I do is I take my diamonds, I take my scissors, I cut the top off, I fill up, I fill up my, my, my bigger cup. See, I filled up my bigger cup. Then what I do is I take my smaller tray and I put a few of the diamonds in the smaller tray. Then I put the big tray down and then I shake it. And I'm taking, when you go to shake these, shake them very gently or else they're going to end up everywhere but where you want them to be. Then once you have that set, you then charge your pen. And charging your pen means simply you take your wax piece you check it, there's a little piece of plastic, see this little tiny plastic thing to protect the wax. Then you take it, you take your pen, you take your pen, and you just push it through the wax. And you see a little hole in the wax. I don't know if you can see it, there's a little hole in the wax. And now my pen is charged. Then I can pick up the pen and I can go to my letter P, and you do the whole thing wherever there's a letter P. Now, when you're done with this, you're gonna to say to yourself, hey, I got them all. Uh, no. You will never get them all. You will never get them all. I have found myself 15 times as I'm going through each of the different letters. Oh, there's another P. Now I gotta put another. But with this thing, what I do is since I know it's gonna be a P, I take up my masking tape, and I take a little piece of masking tape, I put it on the cover, I take my magic marker, I put the letter P, then whatever I have excess, I put back in here and I put it on the side. And what you do is you go through this one color at a time, you pick up the ones, and what my normal routine is, I usually start, the first 10 minutes I talk to myself. I try to decide what I'm going to do, how am I going to do it. Then when I stop talking to myself because my friend I'm going to answer myself, I put my ear pods on and my phone and I listen to music. That lasts for about 10, 15 minutes and then after that I start singing the songs that are on the music at which point Kathy goes on the computer and shuts the door. And you can have a session that lasts an hour. You can do this. For I've been known to do it for six hours. And just so you know that it's relevant, when I'm done with the whole thing, I put these, I get these at Walmart. They're poster stickers from Command Strip. And this is what I stick it. I stick these things on the wall. Or in this case, I put them on the cabinet. But then the last thing I do is, and I bought this at Walmart, this is Krylon Clear Glaze. 
So when I'm done with everything and the photo's finished and I've done all the diamonds and I checked it 14 times to make sure I didn't miss any because you can miss them. Then I spray, I give a good coating of this and let it sit for four or five hours or overnight. This protects the diamonds, this seals all of the adhesive and it'll last forever that way. And last night, I finished this. This is number nine. So from someone who didn't want to do any, who was totally upset at how difficult it would be, I put my engineering cap on and I ended up figuring out a way to make it enjoyable, relaxing, and when you really think about it, it really takes the stress out of your normal day to sit down and just do something like this. So this is the end of part two but like i said before at the other part of the video when this video is shown i will leave a comment that melissa will pin once melissa pins the comment if you have any questions about diamond paintings that i did not answer or some question about what i did talk about that was a little confusing to you please don't hesitate to ask me a question i'll be glad to answer any question that you have. So hopefully, I'm really interested, even if it's three or four weeks from now, if you buy a diamond painting, comment on this video three or four weeks from now that you actually bought one, because I'm really interested to see if this video actually stimulated anyone to go out and buy one. Now, so, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, put them down below. If you haven't yet subscribed, today's the day. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. We'll see you soon. Bye.